Yes, sir. You already know what time it is. Welcome back to the Red Room Podcast. I'm your boy, Jack. So, Dame Dollar, talk to the mother. Talk to the people, Dollar. Shout out, shout out, shout out to 2021, man. Everybody got a bottle of the mix, man. You're still living. You're still getting on the buck. You're still listening to us. You're still all right, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Welcome to the Red yeah, Room we Podcast. Here, Happy New Year. Hold on, Jack Soto. Yo, happy new year to everybody, man. Yo, it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back on deck with the borough. Shout out to all my real rights for tapping in. We're going to jump right into this shit, man. Without further ado, Trump has finally been impeached. How do you feel about this shit, dog? That's so this was the second time they got old boy, though. Let's say finally. We been really knew really what was going on. You understand what I'm saying? Shit just came to a boil. The impeachment is real smoking mirrors, though, because by the time the shit hit the floor, he gonna, he gonna already be out of office, B. Now, what people don't understand is that the only reason why they're trying to impeach him because they're scared they're gonna go run back again next time. So if they impeach him this time, he can't run again. This shit ain't about right or wrong, bro. This shit's still political, man. You understand what I'm saying? They more about, they're more mad that the United States got embarrassed in front of the world than it really being a security risk and what happened with the Capitol. <clears throat> hey, yo, what do you think about this? You know Biden, Biden is in for a fucking shit show, bro. He's in for a bunch of shit. Do you think we're going to have another president after this shit is going on? Like, it's so much shit going listen, on. Listen, Biden, listen. Bro, Biden in position, bro. They won the Senate. They got the Congress. They got the presidency. All three branches of government's on the side, on his side, B. He, he ain't got a face. He don't, he's not facing a divided government. You understand what I'm saying? So he's cool. Actually, when he pumps some legislation through, his little agenda that he got shaking, it's going to slide right up the ranks because at every level, he got the majority on his side. So, yeah, he's going into a situation where it's more complicated because it's COVID shit, social justice situation going on, and a variety of things that's going on in the world. But at the same time, he doesn't have no obstacles in his way for him to be able to take care of. It. So I don't want to hear no excuses, basically what I'm saying. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got all the pathways to take care of the business. You know, everybody, he's the people's champion. Everybody love him. Oh, Biden, 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 sucking his nuts. Let's see what this motherfucker going to do. Yeah, I think he's going like, to... I ain't so. I think he's going to have hella pay um, after all the shit that Trump did. He's going to have a big-ass mess to clean up. But fuck all of that, bro. They ran up in Capitol Hill. Like, what? Is we just going to just allow that shit to just be... We get, get swept under the rug? I heard some people was being prosecuted for that. What's going on with that Capitol Hill situation? That was nasty work. Um... As far as the Capitol Hill situation goes on, that was a national security threat that they knew what was happening, that they foreseen coming, and they just didn't think it was, they thought it was sweet. You feel what I'm saying? When in time, you got, like, uh, 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 um, let's just forget about the race. You understand what I'm saying? Let's just talk about adults, period. You send 50 to 60,000 adults to an area that's upset, give them alcohol and instructions. What the fuck you think gonna happen, bro? Yo, the funny you know what I'm saying? The funny thing, like, bro, I remember you saying that this shit was gonna happen. We didn't know it was gonna be the Capitol Hill situation. Right. Not the footage. I'm gonna try to find that footage, but I definitely remember you saying something about how he's riling these people up, all of these type of people, and we couldn't really put our finger on what was going to happen. And now this shit happens. Yo, I'm going to try to find that footage, man. You definitely said this shit. You prophesized this shit, bro. You but here's the shit, though, Jax. This is where I would miscalculated my, my, my um, assessment. I was under the assumption that when Trump was speaking his little soliloquy, it was going to affect the ignorant people that was poor and white. My nigga, when they did their investigation and they started jamming these motherfuckers and started booking 
who really was out here in these streets, bro, it was lawyers, it was doctors, firemen, it was educated people. So it wasn't like they've been bamboozled. These are people that had the same ideology, same goals, same ways of thinking, same ideology. They aligned themselves with Trump. It wasn't no like, yo, oh, this nigga bamboozled them. You can't bamboozle no doctor that did eight years of school or fire, man. These ain't motherfuckers from the trailer park, cuz. These are educated people that probably believed and thought the same way he thought from the break anyway, my nigga. Hey, yo, I just, I just, I just jumped on a Google joint and looked up the dude, right? This dude, man, his name is John Earl Sullivan. He's 26. He was arrested Saturday in Utah after charges of participating in the attack. This dude is a speed skater. He organizes protests, alienating activists on both ends, drove an Uber, and his 40-minute video following rioters through the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, capturing the fatal shooting of a Trump supporter. This dude, John Earl Sullivan, activist John. You know what I'm saying? This is one of the dudes that was a part of the bullshit that happened on Capitol Hill. I'm trying to find a dude that got caught with a bunch of guns and Molotov cocktails in his car and shit. What was the outcome with that guy? You know what I mean? That dude, you know what I'm saying? He, I want to know what I happened. I get the details on that one. Yeah. Hopefully. Somebody, somebody got caught with Molotov cocktails and all of that shit. But yo, without further ado, without further ado, shout out to Martin Luther King Jr. Today is Martin Luther King Day. You understand what I'm saying? So, shout out to MLK. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We can't. We can't just do that. We can't just. We can't just do that like that. We got to get. Got to get some applause for MLK, man. We got to have MLK get some applause. <laughs> shout out Martin Luther King Jr. Today is your day. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, shout out yeah. to MLK, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to um, Martin Luther King Jr. for paving it, civil rights. You know what I'm talking about. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man, we, we, just, we just trying to get it done. I'm just happy to be back. Just happy to be back. What else is on the agenda? What do you think about that game yesterday? We had Brady Breeze, big standoff. We had Mahomes and the other dude. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think about that game yesterday? Oh, man. It just showed not everything ages like fine wine, baby. You know what I mean? Oh, you got on one hand, the 43-year-old greatest of all time, Tom Brady, a.k.a. Captain America, a.k.a. Mr. Six. You dig? He goes in the hostile territory once again, and plays against another quarterback that has Hall of Fame credentials, but the difference is one nigga on his way out and one nigga going to decide when he want to go out. Mm. Tom Brady going to pick his day when he want to leave football. Sometimes, you know, in certain careers, either it's between injuries or deterioration over time, but at the end of the day, you don't get to choose when you retire. Your body breaks down on you. You understand what I'm saying? You think Shaq wanted to retire or Charles Barkley? They make his knees gave out. They didn't have a choice but to retire. Tom Brady and maybe even LeBron James, maybe the only two athletes that I believe that when they walk away from the basketball or the football field, it's going to be on their time. They ain't going to have to rush. They buy them, break down on them. It's just that they just felt like, yo, I'm ready to go. Everybody ain't had that luxury, bro. And what you seen on that football field was Drew Brees' body telling him, nigga, it's time to go. It he like couldn't make none of the throws that it was necessary. His decision-making started getting changing. As the game started going on, he started feeling that pressure. He started feeling that pressure, that being his last game. And you know what happened? Three picks, my man. And that brother go home. Shout out to New Orleans Gumbo because that's where my man at right now. Eating some nice gumbo, relaxing with his children, getting ready for his NBC job. He got an NBC anchor job coming up. 
probably gonna pay him a nice chunk of change, anywhere between five to 10 million. So Drew Brees ain't worried about it. He's somewhere kicking his feet up one, from one bag to another bag. But the Giants, Tom Brady, we moving on to face Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau, which is set up to be a classic match made in heaven. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And PSC. Now, on the other hand, though, Hold before on. you continue, oh, go ahead, go ahead. speedy recovery to my man, Patty Big Daddy Mahomes, who got a concussion yesterday. You scared me, young boy. You broke my heart, man. I did not want to see you go down. You cannot be running the fucking football. You're not Lamar Jackson, bro. You're not Cam Newton. You're not even Josh Allen. You're Patrick fucking $500 million man Mahomes, nigga. You get paid the big bucks. Sit your ass down and throw the fucking football, bro. Like, he made a crucial mistake that game. Played a flawless game, but if you watch that play, he hesitated so much running that fucking football. He was not supposed to be running the football. The boy is too ultra talented to even be putting himself in that damn situation. That's what my man Dave Chappelle said. Keeping it real goes wrong, nigga. That's when keeping it real went wrong. He going too hard in the paint for his fucking team when they need you on the field. In football, they say the best ability is availability, nigga. So if you're not available, no matter how nice you is, you don't help your team if you ain't on that motherfucking field, champ. So make sure next time your ass is in them motherfucking situations, you sit your curly top ass in the pocket and throw the motherfucking football. That's what I got to say to my man, Patty Big Daddy Mahomes. And if you see him, tell him shout it out to the podcast because we come on after your neck and we hold you accountable for being great. So watch yourself, boy. Hey, you heard it first. Mr. Talk Heavy, that was big, big sports. Oh, yo, big PSA, public service announcement, Harden has come to the Brooklyn Nets. Shout out to my boy Harden, making Brooklyn great again. All right? That's all I wanted to say. Mr. Talk Heavy, sports segment, you got anything else on the sports channel right now? I I got one more thing to say since you brought up Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Brooklyn. Y'all trying. Y'all going all in. Y'all going for it. But you know one motherfucking thing, man? You can't build a house on a hill without a good foundation. Mm. And they got a house, but that motherfucker's on a hill, Jax. Mm. And I don't know about the foundation because with Kyrie not reporting the work and having these personal issues and these things going on with the media and not necessarily getting along with teammates, he could fuck this whole package up. Mm. So I'm going to keep my eye out on Kyrie. I'm happy that the the beard and Kevin Durant has reunited themselves because they had a good time in OKC when they were together. Those guys were teammates for a long time back in the days. So I'm pretty sure they're happy to be together. James Harden, stay the fuck out them clubs, bro. You know what I'm saying? You like partying too much. Ain't no little babies up in New York, B. You know what I'm saying? We got Fabulous and them niggas up top in Brooklyn. So you're going to have a whole different type of monster to deal with up top than you've been dealing with down south. No disrespect to the south. Shout out to the south. But it's cold and brutal up top because it's really cold and brutal up top. That's how it's going down. Yes, sir. Well, I can't say no better than that, Mr. Talk Heavy. There you go. You know what I mean? So, with all of that being said, we are back. The Red Room Podcast 2021. Hey, yo. Shout out to everybody that tapped in. Hey, yo. I don't know, man. I'm just happy to be here, man. Dane Dollar, take us out, man. Hey, listen, man. Shout out to everybody, man. If, if, if today was a day, right, that <clears throat> if you could take the day off because of all the shit that would happen in the 2020, as far as this Black Lives Matters movement, whatever your position stand at with that, as far as the social change and justice in general, if you stand on that side for change, you ain't supposed to be working today, bro. Martin Luther King Day, you know, out of all years, you put that sat your ass the fuck down and chill and reflected on how we're going to impact this world and make this shit just a little bit more safer for the next man. So if you went to work today, 
I got something for you. Watching me? You watching me? Yeah.